Hello and welcome to The Resourceful Woman. Today I am circling back on a topic that I have talked about before that sits at the very heart of this whole channel and why I'm doing this whole YouTube exercise at all. And that is the changes that I've been making to live a bit more sustainably. Changing out products that I use, changing out lifestyle behaviors and habits, looking at what I have tried, what I've been doing, what has worked, what hasn't, and um, and just kind of feeding that back as, as a part of recording this whole journey that I'm on. And now I do want to say, um, I mean, there's lots and lots of advice on YouTube about products that you can switch out in your home and, you know, things that, that you can do differently. And I'm going to try to not just repeat the same things that you've already heard. I'm also, I'm not here to lecture anyone else on their own choices. My feeling is, is that we each have a responsibility to make good choices and to try to do better, but that the choices that I make and the things that work for me might be very different from the choices that other people make and what work for them. And I think, it is important for everybody to try to reduce their carbon footprint and live more sustainably. I really want to encourage that and simply bring some positivity and some reasoning to that journey for other people. I'm, you know, show the changes that I'm making, try to model good behavior in myself, try to model good behavior to my family, and then, you know, hopefully other people might be encouraged or might be inspired to try to make, you know, some of these same changes or different changes for themselves. A little bit later on, I'm going to talk about kind of products and things that you buy, uh, kind of updating on what I talked about last year about in my eco products review. But first of all, it's a new year. I wanted to kind of think about, okay, what have I accomplished in the last year? and what can I try to do better in the year going forward to try to live more sustainably. And for me, what are the ways that I, you know, contribute to carbon output and what are the ways um, that I am kind of a negative factor in the environment the most? And those are food and clothing. I wanna share some information because I, I did do some research uh, before making this video. So I want to, to explain why even small changes to your diet can be um, very impactful as a global citizen. I'm going to quote directly that meat, aquaculture, eggs, and dairy provide about 37% of our protein and 18% of our calories overall, but these industries use 83% of the world's farmland and contribute 56 to 58% of food emissions. Eating animal products is harmful to the environment, but what can we do about it? It might not be practical for, you know, everybody in the world to suddenly go vegan. So the thing is to um, to think about this in terms of what can you do? What is practical? Um, because there is only so much that producers of animal-based foods can do to minimize their environmental impact and the greater power does lie with the choices made by consumers. So if consumers move to reduce animal products from their diets, it can lead to a global reduction in CO2 emissions, even if you're not you know, completely eliminated all um, beef, dairy, eggs, everything else um, from your diet, you can reduce your carbon footprint. It reduces acidification and eutrophication and uh, freshwater withdrawals from aquifers, you know, all of the all of these things are um, impactful to the global environment. Um, so even if you can reduce a little bit your uh, animal product consumption, um, it can make a huge difference. For instance, for a country like the United States, where people eat a much higher than average amount of meat in their diets, um, changes in consumer behavior have the potential to reduce CO2 emissions by 60 to 70 percent. So and that's just food. If you can change your food behavior, you can make a difference that way. If you just, you know, half the amount of kind of meat and dairy that you consume, um, and if you make even smaller cuts to your consumption of discretionary items like 
oils and alcohol and sugars, um, you can you know massively impact um, your own personal carbon footprint. For me personally, I've been really up and down. Um, I, previously in my life, I have gone uh, vegetarian or even vegan. Um, but for given my current family situation for the last few years, that's simply not practical for me right now. So I try to find some compromise and I try to kind of find some um, options that I can kind of put into our regular dinner rotation so that, you know, every once in a while I'll, I'll bring something out and, you know, my family will go, oh, there's no meat in this. Oh, that's okay. And they still, they, they eat it up. So, you know, I'm, I'm impacting my carbon footprint and theirs without any, you know, great disturbance to the force. I, I also compromise by doing what I like to think of as vegan before five, which means um, my, my partner and daughter can eat whatever they like for breakfast and lunch. And I plan a dinner that we all like, but for me personally, before 5 p.m., I go on a plant-based diet. I don't, you know, eat any dairy. I, you know, for lunch or snacks or anything. Um, and so, you know, they can choose what they like, but at least, you know, I am trying to make this small change myself. So that is how I try to um, to compromise, um, you know, living in a, in a household with other people where I'm the one responsible for all of the grocery shopping and the meals. This is one way that I can try to make at least some impact, if not, you know, the most giant impact. And another way that I found, which I didn't even realize that this was even that big a deal, but um, about eight years ago, um, I made the switch to non-dairy milk. And I would, now that I've actually done some research into it, I would strongly encourage that switch for anyone else looking to live more sustainably. Dairy milk uh, requires about nine times more land to produce one liter of, of milk than any of the other non-dairy alternatives. Um, dairy milk also uses between two and 30 times more water to produce one liter than any of the other alternatives. Um, so there are many varieties out there. I'm, uh, I'm putting up some information here. You can see some comparisons because in order to, to choose dairy milks, there's a lot of things to consider. The calories, the fat content, nutritional content. I read some things that were published by the dairy industry that said, oh, you know, you really should think twice about switching to non-dairy because you're not going to get the same nutrients. But actually, that really only makes a huge difference or matters a lot to children under the age of two. And it's actually recommended for children under the age of two if you want to make sure that they're getting their full nutritional impact, then breast milk or formula are really the best thing. And then yes, dairy milk is better for small infants and toddlers from a nutritional standpoint. But for anyone over the age of two, you, you know, there are plenty of other places for you to get your protein and your vitamin D and everything else. It's really just a matter of what is to your taste. How do you consume your milk? Do you prefer it on cereal? Do you prefer it in coffee or tea? Do you, you know, do you have it a lot? Do you have it not very much? What is locally available? So in kind of looking into this, you know, I find things like, you know, all the information about like rice milk. Well, actually here in England, I don't actually come across a lot of rice milk. I know that it's much more popular in the US, but you know, not so much here. So for me, that's not much of an option. When I first switched to non-dairy milk, the first one that I really tried and stuck to was almond milk. It is very little flavor at all. If you get the kind of unsweetened, not vanilla kind of almond milk, it's, it's just kind of a step above water. So it's not great for like having over cereal, but I really like it in like coffee and tea because it doesn't add, it doesn't change the flavor at all. It just kind of, well, it just, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's particularly nice in a cup of tea, almond milk. And then after a couple of years of that, I switched to coconut milk, which I also really like. It's a little bit sweeter. There's a funny thing though about coconut milk is it, it gives a kind of almost a film of coconut oil that might not be for everybody. And then after a couple of years of that, I switched to oat milk. And, um, you know, a lot of people say oat milk is really kind of the winner of the, uh, the non-dairy milks. And I, I tend to agree. It goes well with um, pretty much everything. 
it works really good. Like you'll have seen on my channel that I do a lot of cooking and baking. Switching out oat milk instead of uh, dairy milk for cooking is like it's perfectly fine. It works really, really well. And then there's some other milks that um, I was reading about and I would like to try now that I've kind of researched this a little bit more. So I'm going to see if I can find like some hemp milk or some flax milk. Um, and even I noticed that um, pea milk, milk made from uh, split yellow peas, uh, tends to get really good ratings. That it's um, it's thick, it's creamy, it's got you know tremendous nutritional value, but it's still like really low in things like um, sugar. Something I'm I'm gonna definitely try out this year. It's very much a, a personal matter choosing which milks work really well for you. The taste can often be acquired, you know, first switching from dairy milk to non-dairy milk. There's gonna be a few days or a week where you're kind of like, nah, nah, nah. But um, actually, once you've made the switch, it's really hard to switch back. Like every once in a while now, I'll have a bit of um, milk with something and it's, it's horrible, like dairy milk is, it's thick, it's weird, it leaves this kind of lactose flavored film on my tongue. It's just really unpleasant. So um, yeah, this is uh, this is a change I've, I've absolutely committed to for many years now. Now that I know kind of more about the impacts and everything, I said I wasn't gonna be preachy about this, but I would encourage anyone who hasn't to consider switching to non-dairy milk because the environmental impacts of such really can be tremendous and the more and more people that do this you know the better it is for all of us another few ways that i have tried to change my habits and behaviors in order to live more sustainably choosing foods which are sustainably and locally produced over foods that are out of season have a lot of food miles that can actually make a difference so you know, trying to cook more with the seasons which you know is hard in winter because basically winter ve vegetables just aren't as much fun as all the like summer green things and fruity things but you know even if you can do less of the non-seasonal things and less of the things that have to be flown in from halfway around the world um, that can make an impact i do want to talk about uh, vegetable boxes i know that those are they're, they're growing in popularity and it is something that I have tried in the last year. I would say that there are some pros and cons to vegetable boxes. Um, one massive, massive pro is all of your veg is sustainably and locally produced. You know, it all comes, you're supporting local farmers, you're supporting local businesses. You know, I love having this like huge box of veg like delivered to my door and you know it, it comes in and then i'm like oh we got this this week and we got that this week and oh let's plan something and a, a thing that is both a pro and a con is you don't really choose what's coming so if there's a kind of a thing that you don't really like for our family it's turnips you don't get to choose if they're going to include that or not most of the time so you have to figure out how to incorporate veg that maybe you weren't expecting or you're not sure about. For me, I, I like to think of that as a good thing. It's a challenge. You get this thing and you're like, oh, you know, I don't know what to do with kale. Like who wants to eat kale? And then I go online and I look for recipes and I go, oh, you know, here's something. It looks, looks fun. Like, let's try that out. So I actually, I did have a lot of fun, especially in the, the early part of lockdown last spring. You know, when all these lovely like spring greens and fruits and things were coming in, I was trying new recipes and I was putting a lot of time and care into our meals and things. I eventually, I ended our veg box subscription and I'll explain why is part of it was a resource thing for us. You know, I really had to be very careful about uh, money and what we were spending and what we were spending on the veg box versus what I could spend equally in the local grocery stores, it was like it actually became quite a difference because I wasn't using everything that came. It was kind of, I was I was spending in order to get a big enough box that I could, you know, make full meals for the three of us. Cause some, you know, if you get a small box, you might only get like one apple or, you know, just, just this much asparagus or something like that. And it's not enough to make a meal for three people. 
So you have to get a bigger box, but then that comes with more stuff that you have to figure out how to use. And so I wound up, I was giving a lot of our veg away to local food banks, which is also a good thing, you know, if you can give fresh food to, to food banks, I know they always really want it. But our family, we had to be careful about money and, you know, what we were spending and where we were spending. So I decided to cancel the veg box and I went back to um, shopping in the grocery store. But I am trying to make some changes to how I shop in the store. Most particularly with always, as much as possible, choosing produce which is loose instead of wrapped. You can see here that the, the loose produce is no more expensive and actually in many ways uh, less expensive than the stuff that comes wrapped in plastic. And you can choose the amount that you buy, which is really great. You know, if you're a family of three, stuff isn't packaged for families of three. It's packaged for two or for four. So, you know, it, that's, that's definitely a benefit. And then there's also cook more and order in less. Even, you know, just the difference in, if you think about when you order in, like how much packaging uh, comes in, how, how are your takeaways packaged? They're, they're pretty much always packaged in either plastic or styrofoam, which is, you know, not great. If you can't, you know, make other changes, think about, think about just cooking at home more. Also, when you're cooking and when you're planning your meals, meal delivery services like uh, HelloFresh or Gusto or things like that. Now, I am very much against these. I know that they, you know, are an absolute godsend for other people, particularly houses with children. They just, they deliver these things. They're, you know, easy instructions, put all the food together, all the ingredients are there, yada, yada, yada. I've, I will admit, I tried one for like one month and I was shocked by all of the plastic and all of the packaging that came with it. It really, really upset me one time when for this, uh, this one recipe that I had and you know, you could choose whether to get this meal for two or for four. So I chose all my meals for four because we happened to have four in the house at that time. For if it was a recipe for two people, it, the, it would call for half a cucumber. And if it was for four people, it would call for a full cucumber. And what this company did was they cut cucumbers in half and individually wrapped them in plastic so that what I received in my box was two halves of a cucumber, both wrapped in plastic. And it's like, dude, the cucumber has its own skin. It does not, this does not need to be wrapped this way. And um, likewise, all of the like the little spices and the things, oh, put add this much salt and add this much cumin and add this much, you know, yeah, da, da, da. and they're all in these like, you know, individually little wrapped pouches, which I'm sure is really convenient for people who have no spices whatsoever. But I have a whole spice rack like I don't need to be bringing in this this meal thing with all of this extra packaging and everything. It just made me feel really gross um, and I was I was really unhappy about the whole experience. I think the the recipes are amazing and anytime I, I have a friend who uses like HelloFresh or Gusto, um, I go and I like photograph the, the recipe cards because there's some really good ones that I use, you know, over and over and over, but I do them in such a way that it's like I, I get the ingredients, you know, as sustainably produced and packaged as possible. I can even simplify them to a certain extent. So I don't want to get down on, on anyone who uses meal delivery services, but I, I would encourage people to think very hard about the amount of waste that is generated by those things and if it is really worth it. If, you know, once you know a few of the recipes, can't you just make it yourself without all of that, you know, individually wrapped paprika and whatever thing. I did say I wasn't going to get preachy and here I am getting preachy. It's just a good idea to try to shop more often, avoid buying too much and try to pay more attention to what you're eating each season and how far it had to travel to get to you and how much it is um, packaged and processed in order to get to you. Changing anything that you can about the food that you eat and how it impacts the environment. Because of course you eat food every day. So if you make one or two small changes, that can make a tremendous impact over a year and over your lifetime. Another big change that I've done in the last year is buying as much as I can 
from package-free shops. Locally, we have, in here in Brighton in the UK, we have lots of these kind of package-free stores where you bring in your own packaging and you fill that with, you know, whatever it is that you need to buy and you weigh it and then you, you know, pay for what you bought, but you're not kind of bringing in new packaging. I recently took a trip to get some of the things I needed and, you know, over time I've, I've increased the amount of things that I buy from the shop. You know, it started out just being like you know, dried chickpeas and a little bit of rice um, and I just get, you know, some of the food things. And then I decided to try the shampoo and I actually figured out that the shampoo is as cheap or even cheaper than what I would normally buy at Boots. So I just take kind of my old shampoo bottle, even if I like, you know, I haven't completely run out. I weigh the bottle with, you know, the dregs of, of whatever is left over in the bottom of the bottle. And then I go and I fill up the shampoo. It, it works, you know, my hair gets clean. So that's pretty great. And then even more recently than that, um, I started doing the same thing with our laundry detergent. I saved an old um, laundry detergent bottle and I do that the same way. Just, you know, fill it up and weigh it and it doesn't cost very much. And so now I'm not bringing in new big plastic bottles of laundry detergent. The shop that I go to actually does provide bottles and things that you can use. You, know, you, can, you can buy them and then keep refilling them. So I was able to do that with the, I use this washing up liquid. It's super cheap. I, I like the bottle, dishwashing soap. Um, and then I think over the next year, I'm, you know, as I go back more and more, I'm gonna find other things that I can try. So I feel pretty good about that. Now I've talked about clothing a little bit before about why it's important to try to avoid fast fashion, why the, the fashion and um, textile industries are extremely harmful to the environment. It, you know, if you want to see some, you know, better information, some of the research I did before, I'm going to put a link up to my video about hemming trouser legs because I, I did quite a bit of research for that. Definitely go go check it out. It's not just about hemming trouser legs. It's also about why uh, making do and mending and reusing and upcycling clothing is so important. In the last year, I have um, committed to not buying anything new. You know, partially it's been pretty easy because of lockdown, you know, I'm just not going out to shops and things like that. But even before, you know, we knew what kind of year 2020 was going to be, I, I was committed to not um, buying new clothing for myself. I, I mostly made it. I did, I will admit, I bought myself some new underwear. I haven't gotten to the point of making my own underwear, although I suspect that is something that I will try to do in the future. And I did buy myself one t-shirt when I went to a play that I really enjoyed and I wanted something to kind of remember that by and wear um, because it was basically the one time I, I got out to, to do anything fun all year. So yes, I bought one t-shirt and six pairs of underwear. Um, and that, that is it for all clothing um, acquired in the year 2020. So I feel like I did a pretty good job with that. Um, I would like to do more thrifting. I have tons of ideas about what I would like to do to update my wardrobe, but that involves thrifting and upcycling. Now with all of the thrift shops closed, that's a little bit tricky. I am looking into some of those kind of online shops, um, I think J-pop and Vinted and stuff, to uh, try to, to thrift uh, from, you know, just other people directly online. So, you know, if I have any success with that, if I think that it's, um, you know, a good and positive thing, um, I will definitely update you on that. And then as well, part of my buying is, um, is gifts, uh, particularly going into Christmas. So between uh, this Christmas, this last Christmas and the year before, I actually made one big improvement. I went from hand making just a couple of gifts to hand making um, about half or more of the gifts that I made this year. So if you've seen my, my previous few videos, I've shared a few of the things that I made. And maybe that's one of those things that's easier for me than, than for some other people um, because I'm so into you know, sewing and crafting and all of these things, um, that, that is one change that's probably easier for me than people who don't have those tools or those, those hobbies readily available. So, uh, but that is, uh, you know, I'm just here talking about um, things that I've done 
and um, how I'm trying to be better at not saying that anyone else has to do the exact same. Moving on to household. I previously shared that I was trying to eliminate plastic manufactured sponges from washing my dishes. I previously showed you some sponges that I bought that were made from like coconut fibers and I tried those for a few months and ultimately abandoned them because the fibers would just come out everywhere, they'd get stuck places, they were just, you know, yes they were biodegradable but they were not great as sponges. They weren't really doing the job. So now I have um, recently switched to a new ecofiber scour, which is made from a combination of nut kernels, bean pods, and recycled fibers. So this has been going pretty well. It doesn't last as long as some of these plastic sponges, but it is definitely biodegradable, so I think over the long term, um, this is a switch I'm going to make, and I will leave a link below for where I bought them. Another big change that I made in my lifestyle is composting. I was composting for several years before I moved to where I am now, but once I actually had this um, garden in, in this particular house where we live, I started like composting for real. I've shared a lot of kind of my initial, you know, journey and experience in that in a uh, previous video, as well as that's a really good video to check out for kind of like why composting is so important and why it is a hugely impactful way to reduce your carbon footprint. So I, you know, strongly encourage um, others who have not already to try out composting. No matter what, you know, how or where you live, there are ways to do it. So definitely it's something to, to think about. This is a tough one. And I would actually love to hear anyone else's comments on this um, deodorant. So um, I realized that I was going through these, this is my favorite deodorant, um, Sure Maximum Protection. I love it. It does the job. Um, I, I do not get stinky wearing this deodorant. Um, but I realized it was going through a lot quickly. It was just like I was just always using it up. You know, and I only put it on once a day. I'm not like putting on deodorant five times a day. But I felt like I was always going to the shop to get more. And every time it's like just all this plastic involved in, you know, packaging it. And I just, I just didn't feel great about that. So I was in the shop and I found this thing, this, you know, basically rock salt deodorant thing um, where you kind of, you wet it and you put it on. And I'm not, I'm not super confident about the efficacy of this deodorant. Um, and I'm also not thrilled about the fact that it is also, you know, in a plastic casing and everything, because I still feel like, well, this isn't, you know, it's still eventually waste that's going into the landfill. But the one thing is, is that I've been using this one deodorant for, I think, like three or four months now, and I haven't had to replace it. So overall, yes, this is much better than this for just for the amount of like plastic waste generated. Um, but I do really miss, you know, having this good deodorant. So um, I would love to hear from other people if you have found an even better deodorant situation, something that actually works. Because I, as I say, I walk four miles to and from the grocery store. Like I do get sweaty and I would like to find something which is sustainably packaged um, or, you know, that works really well, or, you know, something I can feel good about. So I'm, I'm tossing that back out there to the masses. Um, whatever you can kind of share with me. Uh, would be great. When I actually started researching and, and writing down what I wanted to say today, um, I was actually surprised. It was like, oh, I've, I've really made a lot of changes that I didn't realize that, you know, oh, wow, I've done this and this and this and this and this. And the thing is to, to do it incrementally, to not beat yourself up and say, you know, I'm just not living sustainably enough and it just, it can't be done. And, you know, I have tried different things some things have worked really well, some things have worked not so much. Um, you know, it, it just, it really is a matter of kind of your personal habits and your lifestyle. And, you know, if you make one little change here and one little change there and another little change there, over time, um, these become big changes that um, have a massive impact. So, you know, that is what this whole journey for me is about. And I just really want to keep encouraging other people 
um, and hear about other people's journeys and, you know, what are some things that I haven't tried that I should be trying. So, and then finally, what are some changes I can now commit to for the coming year? Well, um, one thing I've been thinking about recently is I still haven't made reusable uh, makeup wipes. I have a new skincare routine that I'm using each night that involves using a wipe. So um, one change I'm definitely going to commit to now is making reusable wipes so that I don't keep just, you know, using wipe every night and throwing it in the trash. Uh, so that's something I can, you know, very easily do. And I know a lot of other people out there have, have made that change. Uh, another change I, I can easily commit to is more thrifting and upcycling of clothes. So, um, you know, I have all these clothes that, you know, either don't fit or I can't wear anymore. Um, try to find some kind of like use for them or way to upcycle things into other more useful things. Um, and then when I feel like I need something new or I need to freshen my wardrobe, to source everything out of um, pre-used and thrifted items. So that's that's a change I can I have committed to and I'm gonna continue to commit to. And then a, a little bit bigger thing, but I would like to, to try to get to a point. I've talked before about um, food and my family's food habits and things like that. I want to try to commit to doing vegan two nights a week. If I'm you know, trying to do my, my vegan for before five for myself. And I'm trying to incorporate more vegetarian and vegan meals for my family um, to try to just increase that just a little bit, just, you know, next step, next step, next step. And I may fail a little bit at this. I may not get it always a hundred percent, but this is a change that I am going to try to make. So um, this is my, you know, early 2021 commitment. Um, let's see where I am a year from now. Let's see, you know, if, if I can make any appreciable impact um, over the coming months. Um, thank you so much for watching. I, you know, I really, I hope that this has um, been informative and inspirational to some people. And I would love to hear your feedback and advice about some changes that you've made and what has worked for you. So thanks very much. Uh, be sure to hit like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.